friends in today's video i will be discussing about the reduction techniques that are required for elevation of depression in tibial plateau fractures often the residents face problem of elevation of depression in tibial plateau fractures and after surveying the residents i was able to pinpoint these particular problems when elevating the depression often there is difficulty in localizing the depressed fragment and often there is difficulty in identifying the proper location for entering the bone punch or bone tank for elevation of those depressed fragments often the devices are limited and the residents are not sure which bone punch to be used and sometimes they don't have the bone punch at all in limited resource setup and sometimes the depressed fragments are too many to be elevated and it is very difficult to identify each and every fragment the bone punch often enters into the joint while elevating the depressed fragment which complicates the reduction further depressed fragments are often unstable they fall back and are not maintained in particular position and another concern is that whether to use the bone graft substitute or not because even after impacting the bone graft substitute inside the void the depressed fragment is not satisfactorily elevated in the reduced position so we'll cover all these things in coming slides so the first difficulty is the localization of the depressed fragments so the planning starts right from the preoperative period we order the radiographs but in radiographs we are not sure whether the depressed fragment is localized in this part only because in AP view, we are sure that there is depression here. But in lateral view, we are not sure whether the depressed fragment is localized in the anterior part or the posterior part because the medial condyle and lateral condyle subcondyle bones overlap in the lateral view. So we are not sure. Therefore, higher investigation in form of computed tomography is required for identifying and localizing the depressed fragments. In this radiograph also, you see there is some depression. You see there are double subcondyle lines visible on the lateral condyle. This one and this one that means there is definitely a depressed lateral condyle fragment but we are not sure whether it is an anterior part or posterior part again in lateral view the overlap of medial condyle and lateral condyle hides the depressed fragments in this ap view you see there are multiple depressed fragments this one this one and this one so overall there are three depressed fragments but again we are not sure which one is more depressed which one is less depressed we need a cd to better identify the depressed fragments and this white fair you see this is the impacted bone because of the depression the cancerous bone underneath the depressed fragments gets impacted and this is thick bone whenever you are elevating the depressed fragments try to lift from this part not from this part because this bone is already fragile because of fracture but this impacted bone is very strong if you lift this part then you will be able to get good screw purchase in this impacted bone so just keep this thing in your mind whenever you are lifting the depressed fragments and in this part also you see there are double lines you see there is a subcondyl line here and there is a subcondyl line here so we are not sure whether the depression is in anterior part or posterior part again because lateral view are often inadequate so whenever you see the axial cut of proximal tibia in a non-depressed tibial plateau fracture you will see that the bone is covering whole of the ring and the inner part also you see there is no void in the bone that is shown here there is no void there is a fracture but there is no void that means there is no depression and in the sagittal cut you see this is the medial condyle it is fractured but there is no depression now comes the tibial spine part then the lateral condyle again you see there is no depression but there is a fracture in the posterior lateral column then comes the fibula so there is no depression and in the coronal plane also we have to check so this is the anterior part there is no depression in the anterior part then the middle part and then the posterior part so there is no depression now if we see the axial cut of a depressed tibial plateau fracture you see there are fractures on the lateral side but you see while the ring is there the inner part is incomplete you see there is a void here let's see again so this part corresponds to the tibial spine because it is in the central part this part is the terminal part of the femur condyle now we are coming to the tibia now medial condyle is there complete medial condyle is there but on the lateral side you see there is a big void that means there is a depression in the anterior half of the lateral condyle now we are going more down the fracture lines are more evident because of its diaphyseal extension we are going into the diaphysis now and again you see this white thick bone that is because of the infection so the bone that should have been in the void is now lying in the lower part you see the energy of infection we are still able to see this white fair of bone in the lower part till the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction while this was the cut for non-depressed tibial plateau fracture you see there is whole ring and that has been covered throughout with the bone inside now we are sure that there is depression in the anterior half of the tibial plateau fracture we have to check the other cuts also so in this video we are seeing the serratal cut so this is the medial condyle it's intact and now we are going towards the lateral condyle this part represents the tibial spine here and 
now we are going towards the electrophonal you see the impacted bone here that means the depression fragment is lying somewhere here while the posterior half of the lateral tibial plateau is fractured it is not much depressed the depression is more in central part and in anterior part now we are going more laterally more laterally see the depression is more in central and anterior part while the posterior part is slightly tilted anteriorly that means we have to correct its tilt it's not much depressed then we have to check the coronal views also you see here is the coronal view you see the depressed fragment is lying here again there is impacted bone here this is the periphery of the lateral condyle and this is the void we are seeing here in the axial cut we are going from anterior to posterior this is the depressed fragment in anterior and central location and this is the posterior part which is fractured and tilted downwards that means its slope is in extension we will need to correct it and lift it slightly so that its tilt is corrected as we had seen in the sagittal view so these all views need to be seen to know the exact alignment of the depressed fragment so we are not sure that there is major depressed fragment which is in anterior and central location then there is a lesser depressed fragment which is the part of posterior fragment or you can say posterolateral fragment so we have to restore the tilt of the posterolateral fragment while we have to lift the depressed fragment to its normal position in the anterior and central part and the best view for localizing the depression can be obtained after we subtract the patella and femur from the ct of the knee joint so always ask your radiologist to provide you a 3d cut in which only the proximal tibia and proximal fibula can be visualized you see this is committed fracture of proximal tibia shared skull type 6 in which the lateral condyle and medial condyle is fractured with diaphyseal extension and there and there is major depression in the lateral tibial plateau you see whole of this articular chunk has depressed more in the posterior part and to some extent in the anterior part also just to avoid confusion this is different ct than the images that i've shown you in previous slides this is just for the purpose of 3d scan so by this you'll be able to localize where exactly the depressed fragment is lying so always obtain a 3d cut without femur and petla and showing only the proximal part of the tibia and the fibula and as far as the intraoperative visualization is concerned while in ap view while in ap view you are able to localize the fragments you see there is a depressed fragment lying here we identify this impacted subcondyl bone because of this flare the dark flare in the fluoroscopy while it is white in radiograph and then lift it under the fluoroscopy guidance till it becomes in line with the remaining part of the lateral corner so there should not be any problem in the ap view here also we lift it to the level of the remaining part of the lateral condyle under the fluoroscopic guidance but the problem occurs in lateral view because there is overlap of the tibial spine there is overlap of the medial condyle and the lateral condyle depression if you are lucky you will be able to localize this was the same case for which i have shown you the 3d image which was depressed more in the posterior part and less in the anterior part so if you are lucky you'll be able to see the depressed fragment but when you lift it to the level of pedial corner then sometimes there is difficulty in visualization of this fragment here we are able to see it but a better view is needed in such cases so the technique is very simple i'll show you in the coming slide so this is the kind of view we get when going for a lateral view so there is overlap between the lateral condyle and medial condyle but often we are confused which one is the lateral condyle because in fracture because in depressed fractures we are not sure whether the concavity of the medial condyle and the convexity of the lateral condyle has been maintained or not because of the overlap the things become confusing so if we try to rotate the tibia internally the medial condyle will come downwards while the lateral condyle will come upwards so we'll be able to localize the medial condyle in the posterior part while the lateral condyle will come in the anterior part so by this technique you are able to localize the two condyles to some extent this is the medial condyle while this is the lateral condyle because the fibula which should have been lying here has now come anteriorly and the lateral condyle has also come entirely in your fluoroscopic view if you rotate the tibia more internally you will be able to get the better view of medial condyle and there is adductor tubercle that can be visualized here so this is the medial condyle while this part is the lateral condyle but we are still not sure whether the depression has been adequately restored or not because only thing we are seeing here is the anterior half of the lateral condyle the posterior part of the lateral condyle which is adjacent to the fibula somewhere here is still hidden behind the tibial spine so there is another trick to visualize this part also just rotate the tibia externally so this is the kind of letter view we get 
But if we rotate the tibia externally, the lateral part of the proximal tibia will come posteriorly. So you see the fibula which comes on the lateral part has now been visualized in the posterior half of the view. And you will be able to see a good view of the posterior half of the lateral columnar as well. You see there is some residual depression here which we were not sure in this particular view. So we have to lift this depression to make it align with the periphery of the bone here. So we have lifted it further and then secured with multiple K wires from the medial condyle to the lateral condyle posterior part. So if we rotate the tibia more externally, we will be able to visualize the posterior half of the lateral condyle in a better manner. So you see, you are able to see the medial condyle here and the posterior part of the lateral condyle. So these two views are definitely useful whenever you are elevating the depressed fragments. So by now we are able to solve the problem of localizing the fragments preoperative period as well as intraoperative period. Now from where to make the entry of bone punch, whether to go from the lateral side or to make a medial window or to enter through the medial flexure line. So if you see the depression here, there is a depressed tibial plateau fragment while the periphery of the bone of the lateral condyle is a separate fragment. That means this depressed fragment is not in continuity with the peripheral bone and also there is combination on the lateral side. So in such a scenario, when this is an independent fragment, you can make the entry of the bone punch from the lateral condylar fracture. Why? Because you will be able to lift the fragment and this bone which is lying here is independent of this particular fragment. So even if this bone gets displaced, it will not impact the reduction of this depressed fragment. So you see, we have made the entry of the bone punch from this part and then lifted the fragment. It is beautifully reduced and this periphery you see is not in contrary with the subcondylar bone of the joint. So this is the way in a scenario whenever there is combination on the lateral side and the depressed fragment is independent of the periphery of the lateral condyle. So this was the coronal cut of the same case which I have shown you here in which the periphery was independent of the depressed fragment. Again you see the peripheral bone is a separate fragment while the depressed fragment is a separate one. They are not in quantity and this is the thick infected bone which I have told you you have to lift the depressed fragment from this part not from this part otherwise you are going to damage the subcondylar bone. So you have to lift the bone from somewhere here. This is a 3D cut you see this is a peripheral bone which is fractured and there is a separate depressed fragment inside it. So you have to make your bone punch entry from somewhere here through the combination. Now in this case this the lateral condyle is here. You see the periphery of the lateral condyle is in continuity with the depressed fragment. The fragment is depressed here but is continuous with the lateral bone. So if you try to make the entry of bone punch from somewhere here you will be able to lift it but you will not be able to lift it properly or reduce the lateral condyle because for reduction of the lateral condyle this whole block needs to be reduced there is not a separate depressed fragment so if you are using a larger device through the bone fragment you will not be able to reduce it properly because the device will block the reduction of this lateral condylar fragment in that scenario you have to make the entry of bone punch either through the medial window somewhere here or through the medial condylar fracture if there is some combination that will be helpful in reducing this fragment you see here we are going through the medial side we have made an entry through the medial side and then we are lifting the bone fragment through the medial side only you see we have reduced it properly and that has not hampered the reduction of the lateral condyle because there is no instrument to block the reduction of the lateral condyle in this space. So whenever the lateral condyle block is single or the subcondyle bone which is depressed is part of the lateral condyle, avoid lifting from the lateral side because that will actually make your fracture more complex and it will hamper the reduction of the lateral condyle. And the depressed segment is actually part of the lateral condyle only in such a fracture. So avoid using the lateral fracture line in such scenario. You see it has been reduced perfectly. Now multiple K wires can be placed from the medial side to the lateral side to hold the fragment in that particular place. So this was a CT of the same case which I have shown you earlier. The subcondylar bone is part of the lateral condyle. If you make entry from here, you will not be able to reduce this particular fragment and that fragment is actually the part of the depressed fragment. So your reduction is going to remain compromised or you will make the fracture more complicated. So you see the medial side is completed. We can make an entry somewhere here to reduce the lateral condylar depression while on the lateral side this whole block is in a single part so if we make an entry somewhere here we are actually displacing the 
depressed fragment now what kind of bone punch to be used and whether there are some alternatives or not so there are a variety of bone punch or tanks that are available in market there are simple ones which have a round surface on the top part there are some bone punch which have rectangular surface on the top part and some are straight while some have this angulated boot shape so whenever you are making entry from the medial side the curved bone punch is more helpful right for straight one you will have to make an entry from much lower part of the diaphysis you see here we have made an entry from here to reduce this fragment because the straight instrument has to come in line with this fragment otherwise if you make an entry from here you will not be able to reduce it properly you have to go in the lower part from where you will be able to address this fragment the fragment and the bone punch should be in a proper alignment if your bone punch goes from this part you will be able to reduce this fragment and if you are using a guard bone punch your track will remain straight like this but your entry will be more proximal so if you are making an entry more proximal you will not need a longer plate to span your bone punch window you can end your plate somewhere here but if you are going to this track you'll have to use a longer plate which has to span two or three screws distal to the bone window you have created so the curved bone punches are helpful whenever you are lifting the depression from the medial side and if the depressed fragment is more in the center part then you have to go more downwards and in such a scenario the curved bone punch will be helpful and if the depression is more in the periphery somewhere here then you can definitely use this straight one also that can make entry somewhere here because you have to impact in this part not in this part but if it's more central definitely you have to go more downwards you see here if you are using a curved one we have to make entry somewhere here but if we are using a straight one we have to make an entry more in here and this boot shape punch it is helpful whenever we want to maintain the position of the depressed fragment parallel to this interface so you see we have made an entry here and the depression is more in the posterior part that means whole of the subcondral bone has been angulated in the posterior part and we have to straighten it if we use a bone punch which is having a straight interface that means like this then we will not be able to angulate this depression but if we use a bone punch which is angulated like this then we will be able to give a shape to the depressed table plate to fracture that will be parallel to the bone punch i'll show you see we have lifted it and now we have lifted it more the depression has assumed the shape of the punch which we have inserted a simple bone punch or tank can be used whenever we are entering from the lateral side whenever there is combination and the subcondral bone of the depressed fragment is independent of the lateral condyle then we can enter the bone punch through this window like we had done in the previous image i'd shown you earlier so we are able to re reduce it because the lateral wall is not the part of this fragment and in limited resources setup you can use 3.5 or 4 mm steam and pins also for lifting the depressed fragments the only trick is that you need not to use this part this part can be used to make the entry of the window like i'll show you in the video and this part can be used the blunt part can be used for lifting the depression but do check the views ap view and the modified lateral views that i've shown you to fine tune the position of this part to lift the depression because if you are going in the wrong place then there are chances that you are going to breach this part into the joint so we have made the entry of the statement pin now we are using the blunt part see we are able to lift the depressed fragment using this blunt end of the statement pin we are able to fine tune the reduction under the fluoroscopic guidance so this has been reduced then we are securing it multiple k wires and also we have to check the other views also the modified oblique views so we have checked the lateral oblique view also in which we are able to see whether the steam and pin blunt end is properly placed or not so we have reduced it then secured it with multiple k wires from the medial side and what about when the depressed fragments are multiple so in a, such a scenario it is very difficult to localize a fragment and to pass the bone punch exactly underneath the fragment so there are some tricks which can be helpful what you need to do get a CT identif identify the fractured peripheral bone of the lateral condyle because underneath that there are depressed fragments and without hampering the soft tissue attachments of this window just open the fracture here and if you open the fracture here you will be able to see all these depressed fragments then you will be able to identify all the fragments underneath this lateral window so this depressed fragment is lying here while the other depressed fragment here is like here so we are able to visualize it properly then you need to use some flat wide area instrument 
to lift the subcondylar bone from this impacted area and then lift the vestigial petal fragment to the level of the joint under the fluoroscopic guidance. You see this was the fragment I was telling. It is lying here. Once we have lifted the lateral condylar window of this thin bony fragment in the periphery. This is the fluoroscopic image of the same case. There are too many depressed fragments. What we are doing, we are entering the periosteal elevator through the window we have created and lifting the impacted subcondylar bone which was lying somewhere here. And once we are doing that, we are able to reduce the depressed fragment in a proper manner. You see, it has been lifted. Earlier, the lateral condyle article surface was not visible, but now we are able to visualize it to some extent. When you are doing that, keep your KYS ready from the medial side. So the moment you are able to reduce it properly, you are able to lock this fragment in position with multiple KYS from all over the area on the medial side. That means from postromedial, medial and anteromedial, so that the depressed tibial plateau fragments on the lateral side are secured in the position. So you have to scoop the periosteal elevator or any flat instrument like osteotome like this so that the subcondylar bone which was impacted here comes proximally because that is the good bone in which you get a good screw purchase and if you are not satisfied with the lifted fragment you want to lift it more what you can do you can impact the bone punch directly over the periosteal elevator or any flat instrument that you are using and that is going to lift all the fragments proximally but if you are using the bone punch directly then there are chances that you'll fracture these fragments and your bone punch will go into the joint but if you are using a wide flat instrument that will actually increase the surface area of this bone punch so you'll be able to reduce the depression in a better manner so this is a pictorial representation of the multiple depressed fragments so our periosteal elevator is actually wide instrument which is lifting most of the fragments to the proper location and we can fine tune the lifting of those fragments with multiple fluoroscopic views and once we are satisfied with the alignment then we have to pass the KVAS from the medial to the lateral side to keep the fragments locked in that particular position. So our KYS will be going from this part to this part and they are going to lock the depressed fragments in a reduced position. Often there are concerns that the bone punch enters into the joint whenever we are impacting. So usually this happens whenever there are multiple comminuted fragments of the depressed tibial plateau fracture. So there are multiple fracture lines from where your one bone punch can enter into the joint. So the best thing is to localize the fragments before passing the bone punch and check multiple views which I have shown you in the previous slide to fine tune the direction of the depressed fragment and one trick is that whenever you are making the entry of bone punch and impacting the bone always feel for the resistance in the fluoroscopic guidance for, so for example in this AP view we are lifting the depressed tibial plateau fracture and while impacting it we are able to feel the subcondylar bone and simultaneously we are able to see the movement of the depressed fragment as well that means we are beneath the depressed fragment but if we are not able to feel the resistance and the bone is not moving that means we are going somewhere else that means we are not underneath the depressed fragment so sudden loss of resistance whenever you are impacting the depressed fragment means that you have entered somewhere here near the fracture line so always feel for the resistance and check the fluoroscopic views the ap view and the oblique views which i have told you earlier and keep your kys ready the moment you are able to reduce the fragment in ap and lateral view then secure the fragment with multiple kys from the medial side here also we are in lateral view we are able to feel the resistance of the subcondylar bone and simultaneously we are able to see the reduction of the depressed fragment but if we are not feeling the resistance that means we are going somewhere else so always check the views and keep on feeling for the resistance and often there are concerns that whenever we are lifting the fragment the depressed fragments falls back into the place so here you see the surgeon here is is struggling to bring the fragment from this location to this location but he is not able to do you see the fragment is constantly lying below so why is it happening you see there is space here but why it is not coming here because this space is actually covered with cartilage and meniscus you are not able to see these things in the fluoroscopy because they are not radio opaque so this space you are seeing here is already occupied and you are impacting the subcondylar bone against already existing structures so you will not be able to elevate this fragment more proximally so what is the technique then so what you need to do you need to distract the joint you need to make some space for the depressed fragment to go back into its original space so once you are able to distract the joint you will see opening of the space then when you lift the depressed fragment it is definitely going to be elevated and aim for the position that is slightly above the remaining part of the lateral condyle. That means while this is depressed, we want 
our fragment to be somewhere here because once you have reduced it to that particular position then automatically with the infection of the femur lateral condyle article surface it is going to match the remaining part of the lateral condyle you see here we have distracted the joint now we are lifting the fragment you see now we are able to lift it proximally slightly above the remaining part of the lateral condyle and the moment you reach that particular position pass multiple k wires through the remaining part of the lateral condyle towards the diaphysis or the medial condyle you see here the elevation has been maintained and we have passed multiple k wires and you see the depressed fragment is now in line with the remaining part of the lateral condyle and once you are satisfied with the reduction of the lateral condyle lip depression then pass multiple locking screw through the plate so that the depressed fragment will not drop back through that particular network of screws you see here there is a huge network of screws from posterior part to the anterior part and these oblique screws also and this oblique screw is also there so with this network of screws the depressed fragment will remain elevated so we have created a draft of screws on which the depressed fragment is lying and it will not fall back and what about the bone graft substitutes often the concern is that even after impacting these bone graft substitutes and bone graft the depressed fragment is not stable so the literature says that the, these bone graft substitute and bone graft do not guarantee that the fragment will not displace so all depends upon the strength of your locking plate and the draft of screws that you have created that will decide whether your depressed fragment will remain in position or not so in my personal experience i do not use any bone graft substitute in proximal tibia because often they are associated with wound complications there is some constant serious discharge from the wound which although sterile but complicates the wound healing so i am not in favor of any bone graft substitute in proximal tibia fractures but if there is major void because of the combination then definitely you can use in these bone graft substitute or bone graft because that will act as a void filler and new bone formation will be enhanced if you have filled the void with some graft or bone graft substitute so in that scenario you can definitely use otherwise it cannot assure you the structural strength for elevation of the depressed fragment for that you have to trust the locking plate and the kind of fixation you have provided and that means there should be raft screws properly placed and there should be multiple screws in multiple directions from the locking plate that will create a web of network underneath the subcondral bone of the depressed fragment so here you see we had placed a bone graft substitute and this underneath this depressed fragment but the moment we place these screws this fragment itself gets displaced that means it is not providing any structural strength to the depressed tibial plateau fragment all depends upon your screws that are going through the locking plate and in literature also there is no significant difference in placement of the bone graft substitute versus a fixation without bone graft substitute or bone graft so that's all personal choice if you want you can do otherwise it's not needed cancellous bone if there are no major risk factors heals very well so in this example the depression was lifted but there was no bone graft substitute this was immediate post-operative radiograph you see there is a raft of screws and this was after six months you see the fracture has healed well without the loss of reduction or depression of the fragment this is a community fracture again there is a depression in this zone we have placed multiple raft screws on the collateral side again this has healed well without any residual depression and this was also a community fracture in which there is depression on the lateral condyle again we have provided raft of multiple locking screws this healed well without any complication and in this case there is gross depression there are multiple depressed fragments and there is infection of the bone here we have lifted the depression placed multiple raft screws to support the depressed fragment and no bone graft substitute or bone graft was used and it also healed well without any complication so bone graft substitute it all depends upon the void that you have created if you think that the void is a major one then you can use some bone graft substitute or bone graft preferably bone graft should be used i will suggest to use the bone graft to avoid any wound complication due to bone graft substitutes otherwise it's all personal choice and you can use it when needed i think i have addressed most of the queries which were related to the depressed lateral condyle fractures if you have any queries and if you want discussion on an additional topic related to reduction of table plateau fractures i will try to address those as early as possible there are some other remaining topics related to reduction of table plateau fractures that will be covered in other videos thank you